John Jones is the number one pound for pound fighter on the UFC's official pound for pound rankings, despite Islam Makachev knocking out Alexander Volkanovsky. Let's go ahead and get on into this, but guys, first, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy the MMA content. I upload five MMA videos a week or more. I also just added channel membership, so if you are interested in some extra perks, consider hitting that link in the description. Now, back to the video. John Jones, number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Interesting, a lot of people seem to disagree with this, and a lot of people think that Islam Makachev is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Well. I wanted to research this, and I found a very well-written article by TheBodyLockMMA.com. I am going to link the, dis the link to this in the description so you can check out this article for yourself. It's very good, very well-written, and it explains how the UFC pound-for-pound -pound rankings are determined and the criteria... <clears throat> no, nice, nice voice crack there. <laughs> the criteria on how these rankings are determined. And I want to get right into that. We're, we're going to be talking about Islam and Jones for this video. Firstly, this is what the article says. Firstly, the fighter's record. Okay, they both have great records. They both have 20 plus wins, only one defeat. So I think records are, pr are pretty much even. Jones has a better level of competition throughout his entire career. But you're going to see later on in this video, that does not matter. The, the further I get into this article, the, that, that's not going to matter. Next part. Recent performances play a significant role. Now, this article does not say how long ago a recent performance was. <clears throat> Got another voice crack. How long ago a recent performance was. I'm going to assume it was. it's within the last year. But just for the sake of this video, let's say three years, okay? A winning streak or a dominant victory can significantly boost a fighter's ranking. So Jones and Islam have both been on win streaks. They, they both have 10 plus fight win streaks. I think that's kind of a wash. And then a dominant victory. We're going to get into a dominant victory a little bit further into the article. Secondly, the quality of opponents matter. Fighters who consistently face and defeat top 10 ranked opponents are likely to be ranked higher. So, Islam and John Jones, both of them have fought and beat top 10 level fighters in their respective divisions. The last couple fights that, you know, Jones with Reyes and Gone. Vol or uh, Islam with Volk and Charles Oliveira. But both of them have, have top ranked wins in their divisions. So we need to look at the pound for pound rankings. When Jones beat Gon, when he defeated Cyril Gon at UFC 285 in March of 2023, Cyril Gon was not in the top pound for pound rank rankings. He, was, he wasn't in the pound for pound rankings. In, I think it was February of 2020, when Jones fought Dominic Reyes, Dominic Reyes was not in the pound for pound rankings. Now we look at Islam. When Islam fought Charles Oliveira, Charles Oliveira was in the top five of the pound for pound rankings, and he was the number one ranked lightweight contender. And then we look at Volkanovski. The first fight with Volkanovski at 284 earlier this year, Volkanovski was the number one ranked pound for pound fighter in the UFC. Islam, of course, beat him by a decision, and then when they rematched 10 months later, Volkanovski was the number two pound-for-pound -pound ranked fighter in the world, and Islam knocked him out in the first round. So when it comes to the quality of the wins, Islam clearly takes this. Now, let's get to the third. Thirdly, the manner of victory is considered. A fighter who wins via spectacular knockout or submission is often favored over one who wins by decision. So, the UFC favors, knockouts, and submissions. Well, John Jones in 2020 scraped by Dominic Reyes, many people think Dominic Reyes won that fight, including me, by a very close decision. He then submitted Cyril Gaon. Very, very impressive win for John Jones, the one over Gaon. Now we go to Islam. Islam submitted Charles Oliveira. And this article specifically says a spectacular knockout or submission. I don't think a submission gets any more spectacular than over the fighter who has the most submissions in UFC history. Cyril Gaon, while the John Jones performance was really good, was not really known for a, having an extensive ground game. I'm not trying to shit on Jones or Gaon, I'm just being objective here. Cyril Gaon was not as much of a threat on the ground as Charles freaking Oliveira. So in my, my opinion, that alone is an amazing finish, amazing submission. 
He then has a close decision with Volk, which I thought he clearly won three to two, maybe even four to one. And then he knocks out Alexander Volkanovsky in the first round of their rematch. I, I don't know what how like what more spectacular of a finish this guy has to do over top pound for pound ranked fighters in Oliveira and Volkanovsky. So, in my opinion, Islam wins that category as well. You know, the the spectacular knockout or submission category. Now, moving on to a final factor, and I think this one's important as well. Another crucial factor in the fighter's activity level, and an active fighter, even one with an impressive record, may drop in the rankings due to inactivity, while active fighters may ascend. Active fighters versus inactive fighters. Since 2020, John Jones has two fights in the last three and a half, almost four years. Two fights. Islam Makachev, since 2020, has six or seven fights. The, the guy has been pretty active. All of them being finishes, except for the decision win over Volkanovski in their first fight. So, if we're looking at the, the criteria here, Islam wins nearly everywhere. He's got the better performances. He has been more active. He has the quality wins. He has, you know, the, the better the better finishes. You know, Islam, Islam wins when we look at this criteria. Now, why is John Jones ranked number one? Well, you, you know, anyone could speculate that maybe it's to promote, promote his upcoming fight at UFC 295, which he is out of now, of course. And that's really it. I, I can't think of any other reason why they would have John Jones as number one, just to promote that fight. Maybe the UFC really likes Jones. Maybe the media members really like Jones. You know, the media members who decide the rankings. I don't know. I don't know. But I do think it's an issue. I think it's a big issue because the rankings fucking matter. They matter. Why are we going to have a number, a numbered rank system? Numbered. So that means it's, you know, it's depending on statistics here. Why are we having a numbered rank system if it doesn't matter? You know, put Ben Askren at number one. You know, this is not a GOAT conversation. This isn't a GOAT list. This isn't the UFC's greatest fighters of all time. If it was, Demetrius Johnson and, and GSP and Anderson Silva would be at the top of the list. But guess what? They're not active fighters. Because this is a pound-for-pound pound ranking list, it's on active fighters who have the best wins recently. Not Leota Machida 12 years ago. Not Rampage Jackson in 2013. Not DC in 2015. Those those wins are great. Those wins are great for John Jones. They don't they don't matter when it comes to the pound for pound rankings. They don't they don't matter. They don't matter. Recent performances, the quality of the win, the quality of the opponent, and if you're getting a finish or a decision. That's what matters according to this article on the UFC's criteria for pound for pound rankings. So if John Jones is coming back after a three year retirement, gets a decent win over Cyril Gaon, a, you know, who is a good fighter? He, is he just, are we gonna keep him at number one forever? He's gonna be out for eight months due to this injury and I hope he comes back fine. I hope he heals up. I don't wish any ill will on John Jones, I don't. And this isn't John Jones's doing. John Jones is just coming back and fighting. It's the media members in the UFC that I have an issue with. How are, how are we deciding this? This is an issue with John Jones indirectly because every time he, he decides to come back, is he immediately going to take over the number one spot be, because he beat Rampage Jackson in 2013? Say, say John Jones retires against Stipe, heals up for a couple years, decides he wants to come back, you know, fights fights whoever and beats them. Is he the number one pound for pound fighter in the year 2027? Be, because he beat Gilton Almeida. Why? Why would he? Why? That's the same. That's kind of the same scenario. Say he comes back in 2026, beats Gilton Almeida. Is he going to be the number one pound for pound fighter again? Because he well, because John Jones is the goat. Because he has you know. He has, he has wins over Rashad Evans and Rampage Jackson 15 years ago, you know? Like, how long is this going to go on for? How long is this going to go on for with John Jones, you know, muddying up the top of the pound-for-pound -pound rankings because of what he did a decade ago? 
I just don't get it. I just don't get it at all. Guys, I'm going to end the video right here. I don't want it to be too awfully long. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this situation. Let me know who you think should be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And I think this is a real problem. So guys, I'm going to end it on that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for sticking around as long as you did. Like and subscribe because I have way more MMA content coming your way. And take it easy. I will see you in the next one.